yo, welcome to Sports and Street Talk. My name is Josh Portis. Rob Gordon. And Rock Jones. And uh, we, today we got a very special guest in the building, uh, Jacob Brown. Uh, welcome to the welcome to the party, man. That's welcome, what we call welcome, it, man. Welcome, Thanks for having welcome, me, man. Welcome, 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 welcome. More than anything, it's a family. Welcome, welcome, welcome. <laughs> Jacob the Bull Brown. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> How you get the name the Bull, man? Like, let's talk about that. Let's start there. Man, the Bull that goes that goes way back, man. I mean, when I first started training, uh, just like when I competed my first time, I just I came in like you know hard. I came in with this hard aggression, you know. So my opponents, so I would just come in with this fierce energy, and I would just get the job done, you know. So it's like. I was so intense with it, and like I would just take them down, get the submission. Every opponent, I would like put them out, like within the first like minute or so. I get the job done, you know. So I go through the fights, and it was like I felt like I just had this type of energy, like a bull, you know. It was just really intense with every fight, and I had this menacing mohawk, you know. So it was like okay, the okay. Very, in, very intimidating. So so let's let's just bring the people in because we just jump right in. we jump right in. So. Yeah. Jacob is a jiu-jitsu fighter for how many years? I've been uh, in the sport for 14 years. 14, 14 years. years. Yeah. My Woo. goodness. Yeah. So you've been, you've been fighting jiu-jitsu for, for 14 years. You started when you were how old? I started at six. You started at six. And yeah. how old are you now? Uh, 20. He's 20 years old. How many titles? Man, so uh, many to count. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a good questionable. Okay, well, so 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 in the world of jujitsu, I mean, we come from a little bit different background. Josh, football, myself, football, rock, basketball, and football. What is that preparation process like? Like, just kind of walk us through a day in the life of like jujitsu. If you like, about to go to a fight, I know, like in boxing, they they warm up on the mitts, and 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 yeah. and, and a, uh, MMA is a little bit different. Like, what is that like kind of preparation process, and what's the process? before a fight like how long do you have before you prep for a fight like what is that time mm -hmm. frame what does that look like well preparing for for uh, a fight and especially like uh anything that has a world title like competition in it like uh i was uh practicing for worlds and pan ams they only come around once a year so i gotta prepare like three to four months early before the tournament even comes so you know i stay my i have to have a good sleep schedule i have to eat good uh, a lot of working out you know so it's like i gotta stay in motion with that for a consistent amount of time you know because if I don't, if I don't keep up, I'm just going to go down, going to down track, you know? So, yeah, for sure. And then that's like, I need, I have, I have a goal that I'm working towards to, and then to complete that goal, I need to fulfill my, you know, my goals. You know, yeah. I need to fulfill everything I need to do. So if I'm going to work out, I got to stick to doing that, the amount of days I'm doing. So if I'm doing three to four times a day of working out, I can't miss a day because then it's going to be like, that's one backtrack that I'm going down that I should be going only higher, not lower you know what i mean for sure right, yeah. right, right. How so, many, so how many days a work, week you working out uh three or four times okay week, okay yeah. I'm, I'm gonna jump into this conversation you know just reading up on you you know ibjif world, ibjjf ibjjf jjf world IBJJF for world world, cha world champion 2019 correct yes yes tell correct. me what that 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 year was for you as far as you know your mentality your mindset you know the process of you know taking every match um, you know, just getting to that goal of like, you know, I'm a world champion in this thing and, you know, you know, I want to continue to do this and, and, mm -hmm. and continue to prolong my career. Uh, I feel like uh, when I became a 2019 uh, IBJJF world champion, uh, well, I just want to see, I want to say how happy I felt because of it, because I feel like uh, the amount of really and work and effort I put into that, uh, it paid off so much. Like I was so focused on that, winning that tournament for Nogi and, um, it just uh it's it took uh, so much amount of like uh energy and like you know it's it's very like it's it's tiring but it's worth it's worth what you know yeah. you know for sure now now, now the process like my, my, i'm about to cut you off rock i ain't done yet man you always doing that go ahead do man. your thing bro <laughs> do your thing i i got to get out of i got to talk to him oh uh, no nah, i'm messing with you um so do the process during the fight like you know you're getting on the mat is it like Talk like give me a feel like I'm visual like I I gotta be in the presence of it like I'm, I'm watching the videos kind of like watching you you know doing your thing and like you're on the mat and like is it sweaty itchy like is it like you know give me like you know fill me in on like the environment of like you know what you're dealing with and then yeah. just the opponent itself like yeah. you know what what do you guys look for like is there any pressure points to get people down like like yeah what, what is that like yeah i mean uh, you you know, there's a lot of secrets there's a lot, <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of pressure during the fight but you know like it's uh it's when you get when, once you're in the fight once you're in the motion you you feel comfortable once you're on the mat you know once you're mm -hmm. fighting with the guy it's like now you're focused with you and your opponent you're not focused on the audience or you know who's watching you 
Um, so like when I got into the fight, you know, my first couple rounds, uh, the first fight I had with my opponent, um, I was already like I had, I wasn't nervous and all like that, I wasn't fearing of anything. Um, but you know, I just only focus on getting the submission. You know, like I take him down, try to focus on my next move, get the back, get the choke. You know, but I mean, I'm not focused on anything else but only my opponent. You know, like doing any trash talking. <laughs> what you, you doing? Trash, trash talking, talking out there? You, you trash talking out there? Nah, yeah. nah. I'm, I'm humble about it. You oh, know, okay. I just like you know, I keep it to myself. You know, like I just want to get in there. Uh, all respect to my opponents and anybody I fight. Okay. And, and I was like, hey, man, we're, shit. We're, gonna, <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna scrap on the mat and then we're gonna shake hands after. You know, that's how it is. Okay. So with the world champion, does it come with a ring? Does it come with a belt, like a golden belt? Like what does it come with? What's the what's the? Oh, we just we get a uh, gold medals. Gold medals, I love that. Gold medals. What <laughs> yeah. you was gonna ask from Rock? You look like you. Had oh yeah, I'm, I've been waiting on you. <laughs> but, uh, I want to know. I want to know about the mental preparation. You know, just when you're preparing to level up and and get in there with with, with your opponent. What's the mental preparation? How does it affect you? Uh, I feel like I just I, I come in strong. You know, I'm I'm always like strong about you know everything I come into. I'm not. I don't ever feel like I'm, you know, thinking less of my opponent. I don't ever underestimate anybody I fight. Um, I'm always thinking like, hey, I'm going to come in here. I'm going to do what I need to do to win and um, hopefully for the best outcome. I mean, I worked hard for this. So it's like mm -hmm. mentally I'm always strong for every fight that I go in, I walk into. You know, so I feel like uh, I just I work my ass off, you know, like I, I train every day. Uh, I wake up early as hell in the morning, you know, like five in the morning, four thirty. And then, uh, you know, okay. eat, eat my breakfast and what you eat. Uh, man, What's that diet a lot of protein. Like, <laughs> like you eat eggs, you eat bacon. What you eat? Chicken, eggs, uh, okay. some salad. You know, green shakes. You know, just anything to keep me like up, lean. You know? Yeah, lean. Okay, so 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 let's walk through a workout. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm I mean, we all in the gym, but what what you you bench pressing you. You, you 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 grabbing and move. What you doing in the gym? I want to know. Like I, I just want I, I want to know, but I want to walk through. Like, what does it feel like to be a champion judicial? Yeah, I don't know. Like, what's that workout like? What no, is yeah. that? Re that regiment. No, yeah, I'm bench pressing. Uh, a lot of like strength and conditioning. So okay. like a lot of like you know calisthenics and stuff like that. Just a lot of a lot of running. You know anything to really stay lean. Um, I've been lifting a little bit more than I had before. Before it was really just a lot of running. A lot of just I used to cut weight more than actual lift. You know, because because your, your 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 dad. I mean your your, your dadager. Uh, dad manager. <laughs> yeah, uh, he he was talking about before we came on that you had to you had to go up and wait because you was you was you were getting sick and yeah yeah I was uh, feeling, so talk about that process a little bit. I was feeling more weak through, throughout time as especially that I'm aging older. Okay. You know, like I didn't feel the same as I was like three years ago, four years ago. Right. You know, so you when was I was walking around at what what weight? Uh, when I was a little bit younger around the time, or like me currently. Just yeah, I mean, what well, then and as opposed to now? Oh uh, well, right now I'm walking around at least like 150 now. Uh, but I, like usually when I'm for tournaments, I kind of like to stay between 145 to 150. Okay. But before I had to be like 137 in like with no gi on, so I had to weigh in at tournaments with 141 with the gi. So Dang. I was cutting the gi weight plus my own weight. So 37. What's the weight? The, 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 the gi. What? With the, the gi, gi, I had to weigh in 141. Without it, I had to be 137. Seven. So yeah. I was like, how much do the gi weigh? Uh, it could be up to like four pounds max. Okay. For real? Yeah. Dang, that thing heavy, huh? Yeah. Oh. Uh. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's crazy. It, yeah, it took a toll on my body. So I so, just uh, go ahead, Rock. Yeah. So have have you actually studied any other forms of martial arts? Any other forms of martial arts? Uh, I did wrestling. Uh, did judo, and uh, you know, I did some like other sports, like you know, boxing and stuff. But uh, that was more like for like kind of just to stay like healthy, just be in condition. You know, just have my body uh, try other things and see how I feel. But I always focused mainly on jujitsu because I feel like that was my passion and what I found. And I started so young in it, it was just kind of what I wanted to stick to. Sweet. But I definitely like have experience with, you know, a lot of judo and wrestling. And I just throw that in all into one and I mix it into jujitsu. And it's like, it helps my game a lot more. So is MMA in your future? My future? Um, not not right now, not the what I'm thinking, but uh, I'm, I'm focusing more on becoming a jujitsu black belt world champion. And then open up my own jujitsu academy at okay. Black Boss sometime. What you gonna call an academy? I'm interested. <laughs> man, okay. you you already know it's gotta be called the Bull Academy. Come on, yeah. Yeah. come coming. on! I was I was, I was setting you up. Yeah. I tried to set you up. Little yeah. 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 You know what I mean? The Bull yeah. Academy. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. You got your exclusive. You got yeah. you got the logo oh. already envisioned, like the logo of the cat. We we working on the logo. You know, got the name. You know, how to get the name. I like the Bull Academy. I might have to come and give me a couple classes or two. Yeah. 
little grappling, you know. Yeah. Oh, so, they ain't ready for me, man. I'm in the street picking up. fights for no reason. <laughs> come on, get some of the things I got coming up. Yeah. Oh uh, uh, well, um, right now I'm just focusing uh, currently on the next two fights I got coming up. So uh, next week I have uh, a Jiu-Jitsu World League Worlds. Uh, that's the world tournament for that specific tournament. I think it's uh, any any BJJF or I, I SJJF. Oh, I forget the names. Yeah. But I got one next week coming up, and after that, I have a super fight coming up that I'm focusing on. So um, what is a super fight? Just explain to the people that don't know, because some people don't know what that is. Yeah. Well, a super fight is just like a, it's a one-on-one -on -one fight with you and one other person, and uh, it's on a big platform, like a big stage, and uh, it's got a, a really huge audience watching you guys. Like, you get tickets, you can watch it, and it's, it's also televised. So, mm. so So what could somebody watch, like, one of your fights? Like, if we in the UK somewhere, what mm -hmm. could we watch? Well, the depend, bull fight. depending on what they stream, you know, every, anybody can watch all the fights on Flow Grappling. I mean, that's kind of like where the, that's like the whole platform of Jiu-Jitsu. Like, you can find it on the Instagram. Uh, I be Slow GGF. down for the people and look in the camera when you say that. IBGGF <laughs> on Instagram. Uh, you can find, uh, the that's the main platform for Jiu-Jitsu uh, to stream. There it is. Uh, and and mm -hmm. um, so, let's tell us a little bit about uh, growing up out here. Because you grew up out here on the West, right? Uh, when I, I moved here, when I was like about ten years old. So, so the difference between the West and the East Coast. Have you trained on the East Coast? Yeah, of course. So, which which one you like better? Um, I definitely I like the East Coast training. I mean, wow, I, yeah, really? I, I like uh, like I like because I I kind of grew up from that training from a long time, and it like it really like made my mentality strong uh, in Jiu Jitsu. And uh, physically and mentally, I just uh, I was always prepared for anything, you know. East Coast. Yeah, yeah, East Coast style, you know. Yeah. So. so and then when I moved here, uh, I really adjusted to the the West Coast Jiu Jitsu style. Um, you know, it's more like you know, uh, it helps a lot more on the competitive side, only because like the East Coast guy. I feel like uh, I was actually like doing Jiu Jitsu at the time mainly for like self defense. You know, for sure. so just yeah, like. You just Catch a dude in the park, just yeah, exactly. You know, yeah, I know how I to stop it. a fight. I get it. Me too. Yeah. I, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but then it's like you know, when I came to the West Coast, I was really focused on making Jiu Jitsu uh, more on the competitive side. You know, like so when I go to a tournament, I know how to do these specific moves to submit somebody or put them in a hold. You know, where I, it's not something you would usually do in like out on the street fire or something. Well, put rock in the hold. I want to yeah, see it. Yeah, man. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. Don't get too close over there now, Rock. Right. Yeah. 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 I don't know if you guys know, but with jujitsu specialists, yeah. it don't matter how big you are. If you're not trained, you can't. Fu you really can't fuck with you. Yeah. Just yeah. straight up. Yeah. So, what are challenging your limits like? Uh, me, I mean, as far as jujitsu goes, I mean, I fought, I fight anybody in size, you know, like I go to absolute weight division, um, t people up to like, you know, 170s, maybe a little bit heavier, but I mean, yeah, I fight any weight division when it comes to like absolute, absolute division is like, you go any weight division you want, you know, after you're done in your main division, uh, mm -hmm. once you enter that, you can go like two weight classes up, it's crazy. That's and funny. then, um, and I, I believe it or not, I won a lot of those absolute fights, you know, like people that's like nowhere near my weight and way bigger than me. So, so you just walking down the street and you just like, man, I can really just end this, <laughs> this, <laughs> this, 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 this it, man, right yeah. here. And he think everything is good to go. And you just like, you know what, you know what, don't mess with me. Yeah, yeah no, it's yeah. possible for sure. Yeah, yeah talk, sure. talk about that mentality a little yeah. bit. <laughs> if, if approached mm -hmm. aggressively. Mm -hmm. If approached aggressively. <laughs> <laughs> I would uh I would be very calm about the situation. Like I was like I would try to humble the guy, you know. Like he's gonna think like oh I'm just a little skinny, you know, skinny kid, you know, that can't do anything. Like that's how we all think when we're that big, you know. Man. Just say hey man, you know, like I don't want to be in the situation, but if I have to like hold down the situation, you know, like there's really easy ways to take somebody down that's big, you know, without having to use all power, you know. Oh yeah, yeah talk to me great. about it. How, yeah. how do you take somebody down big with no power? Man, you could do like you can literally take an arm drag, you know, and trip him over the ankle, or you know, a little ankle. Like there's there's a bunch of like, ankle snatches I do in jiu-jitsu. If you see a lot of my videos, yeah, I see. like mm -hmm. I'm always snatching by the ankles, like catch them off guard, you know, or like I fake it, you know. So it's like you put them in a chokehold, or you put them in an arm hold and get an arm bar. It's so many easy ways. Like Sheesh. that's when judo comes in hand too, as well. Like when I did judo, I've taken down many big people with just a simple hip throw. You right. know, it's all about the certain movements you do and momentum you put into it. Right. So I, I watched a lot of your videos, man, and you are you you're a beast, a beast. bull, yeah. every, all of you. But you, you're a superhero. <laughs> yeah. What's your superpower, man? Uh, like your super move. You, 
<laughs> super move. You better be careful over there. Yeah. Super moving. Yeah. Yeah. Super moving over there. You real close over there. Yeah, cool. I said like uh, uh, so if a guy or something, you know, like I I feel like my main uh base in like uh like judo and jiu jitsu. I mainly like to focus on judo when I'm standing up, cause like that's the first thing you're gonna do. And somebody uh, when you stand up fight, you're gonna take their like shirt, or, like their jacket, and you're gonna use that against them. Just to, like literally, you can throw them with momentum, not even a lot of power. Mm. Of course. So uh, I want to uh, talk about, obviously, we talked about the preparation and your mindset and stuff like that. Talk to me about your trainers, right? You, you trained on the East Coast. You trained on the West Coast. Mm -hmm. What was the value and, you know, what, you know, really got you along this jujitsu, uh, you know, prolonged career mm -hmm. uh, in a way where, you know, like, hey, man, I'm going to take this to a whole nother level. Talk to me about your trainers and how each one was, you know, different from the other. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, in the, the East Coast training when I was a little bit younger, it was a little bit more like, hey, like, uh, it was like more easier on the West Coast. Like, you know, it was more like, uh, like, you know, if you feel like you can do this, like, you know, take it as as how you want. But then when I came to the West Coast, it was like, if you want this, like, you got to thrive for it. You know, like, if you want to make it here, you want to have this spe specific goal, you need these requirements, you know. So like you need to wake up at like 4.30 a.m. You need to eat good. You need to train three to four classes in the morning if you want to win this tournament, you know? So like mm -hmm. you, you really are focused on that. So when I was in the East Coast, I was a little bit more like laid back on that. I wasn't like too heavy. Like I, I was too young too to even like kind of realize that. But now it's like I realized so much more, you know, in the West Coast training and uh, growing up here, I was just a lot more focused than that was ever when I was younger. What What made you make the decision to say, I want to beat people up for a living. <laughs> like what, what, like what? Cause some kids go basketball, football, soccer. At what point would you like, this is it. I, I, I really want to whoop people's ass for the rest of my life. Yeah. Well, uh, it started off when I, I was bullied when I was younger, you know, okay. in school when I was just a kid. Um, So that's when I told my parents, I was like, I want to be put in mm, something mm, that mm. I can self-defend by something. Yeah. Mm. Now, if you seen that bully or saw that bully right now, yeah. <laughs> what would you do to him? <laughs> <laughs> I'm interested, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, that's a funny question. I, I would just look at him in the eyes and be like, hey man, like, remember what happened like all those years back when we were kids? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and if, you, if he was still that same person, I mean, we all changed, but it was like, I would like talk about it just to bring it up. You what know? if he didn't change? Would you would you put him in an arm grab? If he, didn't, if he didn't change and he was just like, yeah, I remember, I still look at you the same, like a little whippy kid, I'd be like, all right, you know, this. Let me do that. what I wanted to do back then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, that's cool, that's yeah, cool. That's dope. Describe to me about like the rules of a match. Right, like get the people like you know how, you know you mm -hmm. get determined to win. Obviously, you, you hold them down on the mat. It's kind of is it kind of like wrestling or you know just give me uh, give the people more of an insight like the rules of the uh, oh. jujitsu and yeah. you know how the game is won. Yeah, well, uh, in jujitsu when you're sparring with somebody on the mat uh, live, uh, depending on how you win, it depends on points uh, advantages. And uh, you could also get penalties if uh, certain moves, like if you're holding the opponent too long, you're not doing anything, that's a penalty. So you can lose like that because you get uh, points taken off you. So um, that's one way you can lose. You can lose by submission. Or, you know, when I score points, if you have like six points up on the guy, you can get points easily, like taking somebody down or passing the guard on the side control or taking their back as four points, you know? So like, that's, that's what I want to know. Yeah. How, how does it make you feel to make a person tap out? <laughs> 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 it, it's a it's it's a good feeling like you know it's like damn okay Tapa. like <laughs> yeah, like like yeah you make, like you feel you make you feel like you know you've been working on that goal like because you want to submit your opponents in every tournament you do because you want to get the job done you know you're trying to get this gold medal everybody in, in the bracket is trying to get the gold medal so like he's mm. not the only one because your opponent is going to be trying to submit you back you know you're not you're not only trying to go for it. he's going to want to do it to you too so it's like, you know, I'm going to get it before you do. So, you know. Who's your favorite jujitsu specialist? Who's your inspiration? Uh, good question. That, that, that's a good one. I, well, I look up to my professors because, you know, I train with them and I feel like, uh, you know, at my academy and uh, I like the way, you know, how what they did with their career. And uh, I feel like it's definitely a good inspiration. Um, but also then again, I like to like think of myself as like, I want to be my own inspiration, you know, because I want to put myself up there too. But it's always nice to see like uh you know other professors like you know mine at my own academy to see like i like what he did like i want to do that one myself you know what about sponsorships and like um 
you know, different advertisements or advertisers that want to advertise with you? Like, do you wear certain advertisers on your gi? Or, mm. like, can people mm. sponsor you? Like, when are you going to be on the Wheaties box? I want to know certain things. Like, you know. Yeah. Like <laughs> no, yeah. De- I definitely uh, I have a, a, a sponsorship for my geese. It's named Moya Brand. Um, Say it again. Moya Brand. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's my uh, gi sponsor. And I have to slap that over my geese. Like, most of my competitions you see, I have a Moya Brand gi on, like, in the back or in the front. You would see the name. You know, so that's that's my sponsor for geese. Okay. Do you oh. could you do other sponsorships? Like, what kind of are you not you not wearing nothing on your feet? So no, no, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. You could wear uh, like you could have other sponsorships, like, but you could only have one geese sponsorship. But okay. if it's like other sponsorships, it would have to be like an energy drink sponsorship, or like a Red Bull, like a yeah, yeah. or like a like a chiropractor sponsorship. You could slap their patches on your gear, but you can only have like one geese sponsorship. Got you. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now, do you like? How does that work? Have you done like a Nike commercial yet? I'm just trying to plug some things in. Oh yeah, you know I mean? <laughs> just figure it out. No. Like maybe a Nike gi. I don't know. <laughs> maybe. No, there's de- there's definitely some dope ass like designs there with gis though. Like I've seen people with like crazy gis, like you know, with different brands. Like I've seen people with, like Adidas gis, like they have three stripes lines on the gis, and I think that's pretty sick. You that's know, dope. so they definitely have some cool collabs. Um, like people even wear like gis from like their favorite shows that they watch. They will customize their own gis. You know. Okay. But uh, as far as like like competing in like IBJJF uh, tournaments, you can only wear like three color gis. You can't wear any other three colors. Okay. And those three colors consist of uh, white, uh, blue, and black. Can you mix it? Oh uh, no, not in that, not in tournaments like IBJJF. Dang, they don't give you no fashion. You can't be no fashion. No, nah, yeah, everybody got specific three colors only. <laughs> Okay. Can't get a Gucci gi, huh? Nah. So, <laughs> yeah. so what I want to ask is, yeah. is there in particular opponent that you got your sights on? Mm. Mm. That's a good one, mm. man. That's a good one. Mm. Uh, there's not like anybody specific. I'm like looking out for, like you know, trying to like. Not, not that I can think of right now, but I mean, I've definitely had some like past fights where it's like, oh, we had like a great fight. I would want to like fight him again at black belt. Mm. Um, you know, like uh, in previous fights, uh, I think back when I was like a green belt, I'm not sure what year it was. Um, I had a really uh, good opponent. His name was, I think it was like Kate Rotulo. And um, a lot of respect to him, you know, thought that to Kate Rotulo because he was one of my like, greatest fights I've, I've had at the time when I was a green belt. And uh, it was a very close match and uh, it would definitely be nice to like, you know, see him again at Black Belt. But yeah, you know, definitely he was like a good opponent. Has anybody ever made you tap out? Yeah, yeah, you know, I've, I've tapped, I've tapped out a few times, you know, in tournaments. I mean, like what I've got. What did that feel? Like? <laughs> 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 I just want to know. Yeah, uh, I mean, you know, it's a, it's a feeling where say like, if you get tapped out, uh, it's like you know, I try not to, you know, make it hard on myself. It's like, hey, man, my opponent was good, you know, all respects to him. So it's like, I'm just next time, I'm just gonna work harder to have a better defense system, you know, and you know, there's like. Parts of like a submission where you have to protect yourself and work on that a little bit more. So if I got like choked out by a collar choke, I'm just gonna learn how to protect my neck more uh, when I train. You know, when I go back to train, that's what I'm gonna focus on. You know, I like that. Yeah, I, like yeah. That. I learned Very something, man. And I want to give this to you. Yeah, because you be getting the choked only out. person yeah. you need to worry about beating is the yesterday you. Yeah, say that yeah. again, bro. Exactly. The only mm. person you need to worry about beating is the yesterday you. Yeah, mm. I agree, hundred mm. percent. That's how we get better in life. Yeah, I like that. I like that. And on that and note, and on that note, we got yeah. <laughs> yeah. no, Jacob, man. That was, yeah, that was a again. pleasure, man. We definitely, uh, you know, learned from you today, man. It Thanks, was, uh, man. Uh, a cool, appreciate definitely you, a conversation. Such a pleasure. Uh, appreciate such a pleasure. You know, we uh, pleasure. you definitely learned, you know, how you pretty much, you know, go about your day to day, and mm-hmm. you know how you, you know, keep continuing your, uh, you know, your career and everything like that in regards to jujitsu. And uh, we learned something. For I sure. found it. A, we it was fascinating for us to just to find out a little bit more how you prepare. And, what the match feels like and yeah. you know the, the different type of training because you know we all come from a different sport football football basketball of course comedy yeah <laughs> more yeah. comedy yeah, yeah. 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 you gotta respect yeah. the you know journey, so yeah um you know we really appreciate you coming by and you know of and course. blessing me blessing us with your presence so Thanks, uh man. on that sure. note man check us out on www.snstalk.net for all the latest episodes youtube check us out spotify uh, Apple Podcasts, all the latest episodes. We in 44 countries. Check us out. Check this episode out with Jacob the Bull Brown. The Bull he Brown. Got, he got the yes. Bull Brown. Uh, the Academy yes. coming soon, you know. The Bull near Academy. You, the Bull Academy. I'm yes, looking out sir. for that one too as well. Stay but, tuned uh, for that. Definitely, <laughs> man. It's a pleasure. Peace. Appreciate that. Peace, love. Peace, Peace love, and love. Yeah.